I was born Michael King Jr. on January 15, 1929. In 1934, however, my father, Michael King Sr., a pastor at Atlanta's Ebenezer Baptist Church, traveled to Germany and became inspired by the Protestant leader, Martin Luther. When he returned home in August 1934, he began referring to himself as Martin Luther King Sr. and me, Martin Luther King Jr. As a result, my dad changed his own name as well as mine when I was five years old. I was undeniably gifted as a young child. So I was enrolled in first grade at the age of five. This was too young for school requirements. I needed to be six. So I was expelled until I reached six years old. As I got older, I was able to skip ninth and 12th grade and went to Morehouse College at the age of 15. When I was six, I had a friend who was white and suddenly he refused to play with me anymore. I learned that his father had forbidden him to play with me anymore because of the color of my skin. For many years, I was deeply hurt by this act. My reaction was hate, but my parents instructed me that it was my Christian duty to love everyone. I credit this betrayal as the moment I first became interested in fighting against racism. In 1939, when I was 10 years old, I sang in my father's church choir at the Atlanta Gala premiere of the movie, Gone with the Wind. When I was 13 years old, I earned spending money by working for the Atlanta Journal and became the youngest assistant manager for a newspaper delivery station. I frequently used my funds to purchase books. My public speaking talents date back to my teenage years when I won an auditorial contest in Georgia for speaking on a topic titled, The Negro and the Constitution at age 14. In the speech, I highlighted the contradictory nature of the U.S. Constitution and the context of discrimination. Before I went to theology seminary school in Pennsylvania, my father thought I was the best speaker he had ever seen. But in my first year of school, my professor gave me a C plus in my public speaking course. Can you believe that? Yet I still became the most prolific speaker of our time. Although I was the son, grandson, and great-grandson of Baptist ministers, I did not intend to follow the family tradition until Morehouse President Benjamin E. Mays convinced me otherwise. I was ordained before graduating college with a degree in sociology. While studying at Boston University, I reached out to a friend who played matchmaker and suggested I meet Coretta Scott. We met each other over the telephone and then agreed to meet in person. From then on, we never left each other's side. I married Coretta on June 18, 1953 in Alabama. After enjoying a beautiful ceremony led by my father, we looked for a place to stay the night. At the time, no hotels in the area welcome black couples as guests. So we spent our first night together at a family friend's house, who happened to be an undertaker who worked out of his home. I went to jail 29 times. I was arrested for acts of civil disobedience on trumped up charges, such as when I was jailed in Montgomery, Alabama in 1956 for driving 30 miles per hour in a 25 mile per hour zone. Six years before the iconic speech at the March on Washington, I was among several civil rights leaders who spoke during the prayer pilgrimage for freedom on May 17, 1957. Before a crowd estimated at between 15,000 and 30,000, I delivered my first national address on the topic of voting rights. I urged America to give us the ballot, which drew strong reviews and positioned me at the forefront of the civil rights leadership. In 1964, I received the Nobel Peace Prize for my unwavering commitment to civil rights, nonviolence. I was 35 years old then, which makes me still the youngest male to ever receive this award. Upon winning the Nobel Peace Prize, I was granted a prize up to $54,000 that poured back into the civil rights movement. From the time I was a young boy, I sang in the church choir and believed in the healing power of music, especially hymns. 
some of my favorite artists were Mahalia Jackson and Nina Simone. A lot of people do not know that I enjoy jazz music too. I traveled to Berlin and delivered the opening address for the 1964 Jazz Festival. I convinced Nichelle Nichols, who played Ahura on Star Trek, to continue on with the role after the first season. I told her that her role is not only a black main character, but a character that didn't conform to the stereotype usually portrayed on television at the time. I spoke an average of 450 times per year. In the 11 year period between 1957 and 1968, I traveled over 6 million miles and spoke over 2,500 times, appearing wherever there was injustice, protest, and action. And meanwhile, I wrote five books as well as numerous articles. As if earning three college degrees wasn't enough, I was awarded honorary doctorates from Howard University, Bard College, Yale, Wesleyan, and many other institutions across the U.S. and the world. It's worth noting that one of my most controversial addresses actually received a ton of praise. The speech bluntly titled, Why I Am Opposed to the War in Vietnam, was recorded on vinyl and earned me a Grammy for Best Spoken Word album in 1971. 